under my guide house or in the Costa Rican rainforest to study bats, but these cotton ball bats are nothing like you'd think. Lots of people are scared of bats or think that they are blood-sucking pests. But bats are really amazing animals. What if I told you that they are actually a lot like humans in some ways? Some build their own homes. Most like to hang out with their family and friends and even share a meal together. But they're very different in one way. Like the coolest superheroes out there, they can fly. They don't have x-ray vision, but they can still see in the dark using sound. Bats are the only mammals that have mastered the sky and are daring and acrobatic flyers. To learn more about these warm-blooded beauties, I need to travel from my home base in Florida to Costa Rica. It's a great place to study bats. In fact, when I was a kid, I got to race through these forests with my dad as he studied them. Costa Rica has over 100 species of these fabulous flying mammals. And the variety is awesome. There are bats that eat insects, bats that build homes, and a little cotton ball bat who looks more like a cuddly toy than a wild animal. We'll meet some of these later, but first, I'm going to join a team of scientists who are working hard to dispel the bat's bad rap. Good to see you. Hey, how you doing? Hola. Okay, I need your help. Bats have such a bad reputation all over the world, and I know you guys study some pretty cool bats. Can you help me blow these myths out of the water? Yeah, sure. I will show you a very special species. Excellent, can we go check it out now? Vamos. Bernal and his team are batty about bats, and they're going to show us where we can find some. So while we tramp through the forest on a bat search, it's a good time for you to learn a little more about them. Who knew bats were so fascinating, diverse, and important for the environment? Now let's get ready to see them up close. This is just fantastic. When you think of a rainforest, you might think of monkeys or maybe sloths. Actually, there are more bat species in this forest than any other kind of mammal. And some of them have very cool living accommodations. Batman Bernal is leading me to the bat cave. Or in this case, the bat tent. Smart. Oh, so that's where their claws, yes. their bat claws yes. hang. Yes. Bernal explains to me that several species of bats in the rainforest actually make their own homes. It's a very unusual behavior. They bite little holes through the midrib so that the leaf flops over, creating a little cave or tent where the bats roost. Cool. See how small they are? If they were any bigger, the leaf would collapse under their weight. But do these bats hang out with their friends? Or do they just find the closest leaf to crash for the day? And how long do they hang out in a tent? To answer these questions, we're going to need to catch some bats. Okay, we've got a tent with bats in it, and we're gonna try and catch them. This is where we have to break out the tallest member of the group, because that tent's up high. Using soft mesh nets and a very interesting capture method, the team traps the bat by closing the net over the leaf and are able to handle them safely. Wow. Okay, I got this. Muy bueno. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Bernal shows me how to hold the bat carefully. Like that? Mm -hmm. 
Let go. They're so cute. Look at that. So these bats don't just see in the dark. They use sound. They make little clicks that go out, hit objects, and come back to them. But you need to know where that echo is going, or where that click is going, and they can use that nose to send it in just the right spot. Ready? Time to catch some more bats. Ay. Ay. Got him. Despacio. Perfecto. Bernal and his team are learning just how many bats live in the forest. And whether they are social creatures like us, okay. or just hanging out with any old bat. Bernal, Amanda, and the team have collected enough information for you to figure this out. Good job! Now we know more about the social lives of bats. Now it's important to track their movements. Remember those cute cotton balls we talked about earlier? Well, we're going to catch some. Got them. Bernal and his team attach a tiny transmitter to this bat. This will help us figure out where the bat travels to at night and where they go looking for food. Also, if they come back to the same home base every day to hang out with friends. So that clicking is coming from that little tag. It looks like the antenna works. Now, Bernal puts the bat carefully back in the tent. Later that evening, despite the dark, we can find out exactly where they are in the forest. The transmitter is working perfectly. This way. How far away do you think you might be? 200 meters. This way. Okay. And we have closed in. About 330 degrees. We don't disturb the bats this way. Every few minutes, I write down where the bat is. And we track late into the night. Bernal has some amazing footage at night. Using his infrared camera, which sees bats in the dark, we capture them bringing back fruit to eat and sometimes sharing it. But the cool thing for the forest is that the bat is a messy eater, dropping the seeds. Then it's back off into the forest for more. Bernal's amazing footage and our tracking data has led us to the next step of our investigation of tent bats. And now we're gonna actually do a real experiment to see if they're a benefit to the whole forest. Excellent. So what do we need to do? What we need to do is look in, in this area under the tent, right? Amanda is showing me the forest floor underneath the bat's tent. We need to count them. These bats love fruit, and we want to see if bats being messy eaters might actually help plants move around the forest. Amanda and I need to collect all the seeds underneath this tent. So how do bats help? Maybe by bringing seeds to a new place in the forest and providing a little fertilizer, eh, poop. I don't see any more. This could be enough for the plants to get a head start. Okay, next site. The data we have collected from under the bat tents and other areas of the forest will help you answer the question. Great job, guys. Today we learned that animals we might be scared of can actually be really important for ecosystems and sometimes kind of cute. Remember, there are so many cool animals out there. Until next time, keep on exploring.